legs up. The Queen must be up here as well. means the seas that way. Have a look. Oh look, boat. I went to France and did the booze one reason. I bought a load of booze and fags. Do you realise we're getting the European common market and they get rid of the pound? We'll never be able to spend a penny again. It'd be called Euro Nating, so that'd be good, wouldn't it? So like was are coming. separate ways of trying to surround us. They'll be picking our bones by midnight. It's nice here, isn't it? It's nice here as well. I think we better make a move back down to the land of the flatness. Look, a couple of dogs here, look. Friendly dogs, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry if I found the sound a bit divvy, but I just am. I've sussed out, I've sussed out the best way of smuggling drugs out of the country is up a dog's bum. It is because a sniffer dog's only going to sniff his bum anyway. They go, he's got drugs up there. No, he's just having a sniff, leave him alone. And what I don't like about drugs, about dogs, is when they, do, when they make friends, they start sniffing your privates, right? And I don't like that. It's an invasion of my privacy. So what I've done, I've actually invented a bill to stop dogs sniffing your privates. Don't you see, just put that on there like that. And they go, hey, 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 they can't get to you, can they? No, that's right, Joe, they can't. But this one, this is a bill to stop dogs sniffing my privates. Look, you see, put that on there. Dog's gone that way. Oh, oh. No, it's more of them. Look. First of all, there was two of them. They've gone round the corner. Now there's six of them. What they've been doing? It's like 101 Divi Dalmatians, isn't it? Film, isn't it? It's like Cujo. I had to take my dog to the vets. He said he had to put him down. I said, why? He said, my arms are aching. <laughs> my dog drinks water out of the toilet, which I really hate, especially while I'm sitting on it. Because when she pulls her head out, he... no, you don't need to do that. What's this? <laughs> It's a vicious circle. Because people actually say, they say, Joe, why do you wear glasses? Right? And I wear them in case I'm going to have an argument, right? Because glasses are great for making a point. Say you're having a row with your husband or your wife. Halfway through you want to make a point, you just go, listen, I bloody told you! Mm. <laughs> now, it's not the same effect if you're wearing contact lenses. Because then you go, listen, I bloody told... Wait a minute, love, wait a minute, wait... Uh, today we're in Weymouth and here is Kev Hawkian. Hello. He's a uh, support act on tonight's show, as long as we've raised dogs in this here as well. Say hello, Tobo. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice of him. Uh, I'll let Was you talk to the camera for a minute, OK? You just no, say no problem. Where... Yeah, because you say you've got your Dunkin' Donuts, is it? Yes, I buy Krispy Kreme. Oh, OK, show, show him the donuts, right? Been this, here. this, this donut, I, uh, I get my mother make it in our country. We're very rich, you know. So we are bringing from Armenia. It has been in the train for maybe, I don't know, uh, 28 hours, 30 hours, but hopefully it is still sweet. 
You will see. It is lovely. There you go. This is what my mother make. And the, the shiny, greasy, is, um, it is special ingredient. My mother, she does this, like, then warm it up, you know. And then it goes into, like, a, I don't know, like a sugary substance. But anyway, I am very, very pleased to be doing the tour with Joe, because otherwise I would not be working and maybe just washing windscreens, you know. And I come to this country, and Mr. Joe Pasquilli, Please, please, I must tell you, you know, I live uh, with him in Bottom Garden, you know, in a, like, a house, what do you call this? Shed. No, 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 mine is called D.O.G. <laughs> like very comfortable, you know. So, no, I am very pleased, and uh, I have been on tour with him now half a year. Uh, it feels like it anyway, you know, and uh, we have a very good time. <laughs> This is a dummy for an ugly baby. Look at that. Look. Okay. Now, Wayne says better come off. I've just got to go and take Wayne off. Now, we'll go and put Kev on. So, uh, just follow me. Can you see me taking off Mr. Dobson? I'll see you in a sec. I look like Richard Gere, don't I? of foods from all around the world, different worlds, there's curries, there's everything, they even do couscous I believe. Today, well, it's also a magic shop plus lots of other stuff as well. And this is the proprietor of the joke shop where I get my supplies from. Would you like to say hello? So, um, hello. <laughs> uh, look at this man here. I wonder who this could be. Would you like to say hello? Hello. Mm. What are you buying really? today? Uh, a pair of stockings. He's buying stockings. <laughs> we found an old pervy. That's nice. <laughs> look at Reynard. Look, he's looking at all the woolly pervy stuff. Anything you like in there, Reynard? Susie Wong. <laughs> Susie Wong. He likes his Susie Wong. Could I try this Elvis wig on? Is that okay? It's my picture. Maynard, try this on. Let's see you doing Elvis. What would you look like if you was Elvis? Come back as Elvis. Susie Wong! <laughs> Do your Elvis impression for us now. Susie Wong! Let me have a look at this thing. What about that? Put that on. A lot of people ask me how, how old I was when I first started getting into magic. Well, to be honest with you, I always knew I was going to be a bit of a magician when I was born, as soon as I was born, really, because when I was born, I actually came out of the woman in the opposite bed to my mum, so I knew something was going to be strange in midlife. And then I started getting interested in magic when I was a kid, generally, you know, I went to a couple of birthday parties with had magicians on. And I remember one I went to, I don't know, I was must have been about 13 or 14, something like that. And there was a magician there, and he was called the Great Fakir. Well, that's what he sounded like, might not have been that, but he sounded like that anyway. And he was looking for volunteers in the audience, and he looked at me, 
he pulled a cigarette out from behind me here, which was a bit of a surprise to me because I didn't think he could see it from where he was standing. So anyway, he got me up on the stage and he gave me a piece of rope. He gave me two pieces of rope. So I took the ends and tied them into a knot, like that. And as I didn't have any scissors, I clipped. And it broke into two. So now I had two pieces of rope with two middles and four ends. As it was quite quick, I did it again. With one piece of rope with two ends and a middle. Now, another thing I can do is, if I take the ends, so that the ends are there and the middle's there, and blow, they come off. So you've just got a middle of rope with no knots and no ends. And I can put them back on by doing that, that, that and that. And I've got a piece of rope, two ends and a middle. If I tie the ends into a knot again, but this time, rather than clicking, I can blow. Now, the problem with blowing is that it's not as accurate as clicking, because the knot always ends up there, when it should be down there but it's not you see it's up there which is a problem because now we've got a short piece of rope and a long piece of rope joined together by a knot untie it i'll show you short and long i can't finish the trick like that so if i take the ends up to the top one at a time the short one and then the long one and blow they become exactly the same length now in case you don't already know there's lots of sorts of knot in the world there's a what knot reef knot slip knot granny knot a waste knot, want knot, forget me knot, and a knot knot. That one's a knot knot, because it's not really a knot. It's just a piece of rope with two ends in the middle in the centre. Have you got any plastic poo? Plastic poo? Yeah. Rather plastic, sticky, um, wobbly. Uh, can we have a look at all different types of poo that you have? There's into poos now. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't say I was into poos now. I'm just for the camera, I was going to show them oh, what types of poos are available. Oh, where's the poos? No, 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 I was just going to show them what the poo was. Step in do though. Right, this one here. Step in do, right, it looks like you stick it to the side of your foot, it looks like you've stepped in it. It's good, this, isn't it? Nice rubber one. Nice rubber one. Nice rubber poo. Oh, straight king hole. A straight King Kong, he calls that one. He's obviously a man that knows his poo. Would you like a sticky? See a sticky one? Can we, would, you like to see, would you like to see a sticky poo? Okay. You'd like to see one? Yeah. Yeah? You're very hairy, aren't you? I'm very hairy. You do have to see my legs, you know, you? No, have you tried waxing at all? Painful. I know, it's painful. But I'll, leave it to, I'll leave it up to the wife. Yeah, but it'd be like the karate kid. Wax on, wax off. There, there we are. Ah, Look at the bubble. That's <laughs> like jelly. Yeah, I don't think it is. It smells like it as well. <laughs> We're leaving now. Pervy man's gone with his tights. Look in the window here. Look. Poo in the window as well. Well, here we go. Off to Yarmouth Pier now to show the people of Yarmouth the plastic poos that they have available. Uh, 